Hello, this is Mrs. O'Reilly here, here to talk to you about petroleum and hydrocarbons. This is from Unit 3A. Our objectives, our goals for this presentation is to look at the chemical makeup of petroleum, discuss how it's refined using fractional distillation, and identify two primary uses. We're also going to look at what an isomer is and be able to identify structural formulas for isomers of a particular hydrocarbon. And last, we're gonna compare relative boiling points of hydrocarbons. And we're gonna compare those thinking about the intermolecular forces. And we're gonna talk about what those are. First, petroleum. It comes from the words petra and oilium. Petra meaning rock and oleum meaning oil. Another word for petroleum is crude oil. In its natural state, it's completely unusable. So we first have to transport it to an oil refinery. And that can happen by train, barge, ocean tanker, or even pipeline, which has been in the news a lot lately. At the oil refinery, the crude oil or petroleum is separated into simpler mixtures or hydrocarbons, or into simpler mixtures of hydrocarbons. Because petroleum cannot be readily replenished by natural processes, it's considered a non-renewable resource. So we have to, we have to consider what, what reserves are available and relate that to our consumption. So to the right, there's a graph showing that. The lightest color, the color to the left, shows the percentage of that region, the percentage that region has of all of the petroleum reserves. In the middle, the percentage tells us the world population percentage. So of all the people in the world, what percentage of those people live in that region? And last, it's gonna tell us what percentage of the world petroleum consumption or usage is from that region. So take a look at that map now. <clears throat> Petroleum, we talked about this, that it's separated into fractions of mixtures of hydrocarbons. Well, what is a hydrocarbon? You might remember that it's a molecular compound that only contains hydrogen and carbon. It's combustion of that hydrocarbon will release energy, which makes it incredibly use useful. This is a picture showing energy as a product in a chemical equation. These are both combustions of hydrocarbons. You might recognize that from our unit on reaction. The longer the carbon chain, the more energy that is produced. And the shorter the carbon chain, the less energy that's released. More carbons is what makes the chain longer. And what that looks like is this show, this table to the right here. So at the top of the table, you see methane, which has one carbon in its molecular formula. But as you go down the list, that number of carbons increases, making the chain longer. All of these are known as alkanes. They all end with A and E. And that's because they all contain single covalent bonds. Here's a look at what that long chain or what the carbon chain looks like. So you have methane, which has just one carbon. Ethane has two carbons connected. Propane has three carbons that are connected. Butane has four and pentane has five. And if you notice, they look like they form a chain. And that's why we call it a carbon chain. Petroleum has a couple primary uses. First, as an energy source. Since when we can burn hydro, when we burn hydrocarbons, it release so, releases so much energy it makes an excellent fuel source. It's also used as a raw material for making new substances or synthesizing new substances. It can be anything from your phone case to medicine to carpeting to clothing, even artificial limbs. There's a bunch of other examples included in the diagram to the right. At the oil refinery, petroleum is divided into fractions. This is through a process called fractional distillation. You might remember we talked about a simple distillation earlier in the year. This diagram to the right, figure 3.6, is an example of distillation. It's when we separate a liquid by its boiling point. So we have a mixture of liquids here in this brown bottom flask, and as we heat it up, the liquid with the lowest boiling point turns to a gas first, and it's able to travel down here and collect before the next liquid even boils at all. So we can isolate or separate the different liquids by their boiling point. A similar process happens inside those oil refineries. It's called fractional distillation. 
large scale oil refining is used to separate crude oil and it produces these distinct mixtures or fractions based on a range of boiling points and specific uses. You're going to be able to see that on the next slide. In these fractions, in this fractional column, you're going to notice that the, the mixtures with the highest boiling points are at the bottom of the column, which is nearest to the heat source, meaning it needs the most amount of heat to boil. The lowest temperatures, which needs just a little amount of heat and turns to a gas first, will be found at the top of the column. These larger molecules are at the bottom because they have higher boiling points and they require more energy. So here's an example of that. This is figure 3.9 in your book. Notice the barrel of crude oil here. The crude oil is sent through a pipe in the furnace and heats up. It then enter enters the fractioning tower. The sections or fractions of the mixture that boil the easiest with the least amount of energy and have the shortest carbon chain boil immediately, turn to gas, and rise all the way to the top. These have one to four carbon atoms and they are gases. They're used for heating and cooking fuel, petrochemicals, and starting materials for plastics and gasoline additives. As we move down, the carbon chains get longer. The uses change. And all the way at the bottom, we have, part, we have the part of the crude oil that doesn't even boil. We call this the residues. These typically have more than 20 carbon atoms and they boil at temperatures greater than 370 degrees Celsius. So they don't actually boil in this refinery. These, this fraction of the crude oil is used for petroleum jelly or asphalt or different road oils or as a lubricant or a fuel oil. They're very thick. <clears throat> we talked about boiling points. We mentioned that shorter carbon chains have low boiling points. And larger carbon chains, longer carbon chains, have high boiling points. This has to do with the attraction between the molecules. The shorter carbon chains have just a little bit of a, or a slight attraction between the mo molecules. And the larger or the longer carbon chains have a really strong attraction between the molecules. This attraction or the force between the molecules is referred to as an intermolecular force. Inter means between and molecular for molecule. So a between the molecule force. In this table to the right, if I were to organize all of these alkanes or these hydrocarbons by the smallest carbon chain at the top and the longest carbon chain at the bottom, the boiling points would rise. They would start at the lowest. Methane has the shortest carbon chain, has the lowest temperature in the chart. If I find the longest carbon chain, which has 10, then the boiling point is 174 degrees Celsius. That's the largest or the hottest boiling point on the chart. Isomers. Notice that these examples each look a little different, but they all have five carbons. If I redrew them into a straight chain like this one here at the bottom, I would be able to see that they're all connected the same way and therefore make a straight chain. But if I look to the right, these three examples still all have five carbons, but they're different. Their connections are different, and therefore they are not the same compound. This first example at the top is a straight chain, but this one here has a branch coming off of it, so we call it a branched chain. And this one forms a ring or an enclosed shape, and it's called a ring structure. These are considered isomers. Structural isomers have an identical chemical formula, but different arrangements of atoms. So they have the same number of carbon atoms and the same number of hydrogen atoms, but since they're connected differently, they're actually different compounds and their properties will be different as well. The boiling point is one of those properties. If I look at this table to the left, these are a bunch of pentane isomers with their boiling points. You'll notice that even though they're all pentane, they all have five carbons in their chain, they all have a different boiling point. The straight chain isomer has the highest boiling point, has the strongest intermolecular forces. Remember, the between molecule forces. So these are the forces that are in between the different molecules. Notice that this second example has one branch coming off of this, of this chain. The boiling point is slightly lower. 
But in this example here, there's a chain of, there's a straight chain of three carbons and there's one, two branches coming off of it. And it has a significantly lower boiling point. This is because the more branches that are there, the weaker the intermolecular forces are and the less energy it takes to boil, making the boiling point even less. Notice the octane example on the right shows the same thing. This first example is a straight chain of octane with eight carbons in it. The boiling point is pretty high. If we add one branch to that chain, it decreases the boiling point. If we have three branches, one, two, three, then the boiling point goes even lower. Let's review. Petroleum can be found in varying amounts on Earth and in different regions. We cannot use it in its pure form. It must undergo fractional distillation, which is where it gets separated by its boiling point. Petroleum is used for fuel and for synthesizing a large amount and a ver large variety of products. Hydrocarbons are molecular compounds that contain hydrogen and carbon. They are burned to release energy. Longer chains will release more energy. Isomers are different arrangements of the same number of carbons in the carbon chain. A longer chain will have a higher boiling point, and branched chains have lower boiling points. The more branches, the lower the boiling point gets. <clears throat> Thank you for listening.